Hey guys, welcome back to Passing Money. Uh, today we're going to be talking about starting investing with little to no money, if it's possible to do, if it's something that we did. Uh, we're just going to go into details, but Kirby, I'll let you start it off with, um, with what your thoughts are on this. Um, starting off to little to no money or investing with little to no money is exactly how I began. Um, I didn't have the wherewithal when I first started. All I knew was, hey, I just want to get out of debt. And getting out of debt was one aspect of it. That's why when, well, that's a huge aspect of it. Living living below your means is a huge aspect of it. That's why when they talk about, you know, Dave Ramsey don't know what he's talking about. If we just, let's just forget steps you know, the baby steps five, six, and seven, you know, steps one, two, and three, those are paramount. I don't give a care what investment philosophy you use. Those are absolutely paramount. Having an emergency fund so you ain't smudging out on uh, debt, running up credit cards, taking everything in emergency, you know, that's a key to it. Living below your means, paying off consumer debt. Those are huge aspects. And I don't care if you go Robert Kiyosaki to Grant Cardone to Dave Ramsey to Warren Buffett to Benjamin Graham. You can go down the line. The only way you're going to have money to invest is if you spend less than you make. So when I started off and then I popped this thing off, it was uh, $50. That's all I could muster up. You know, I mustered up $50. And and right now it's it's a little... It costs a little bit more, but fifty dollars a month, that's the only thing I could do. And this was, you know, during the uh COVID. I mean not COVID, this was during the financial crisis. And I just put that fifty dollars a month in. I kept putting the fifty dollars a month. And then every time I got more money, whether it's a raise or a new job, or I found another way to scrape some pennies off of, you know, paying a not paying a bill or something like that you know, lowering electricity bills or what have you, that money went into the investment. And then as I, you know, more matured as in understanding money and then getting better paying jobs, then it was more money going in. But, you know, they always say you got to start somewhere and investing a little, a little money is a million times better than investing no money. And then you're sitting there when you're 65 and you don't have a pot to piss in or a window to throw it out of, and you're hoping your kids did something so you can sleep on the couch. Yeah, and I know you were going to start that way because I remember we had spoken about that, and it's the same. I mean, for me, it, I wasn't, I didn't start with with anywhere close to what you know I'm able to contribute now, obviously. And when people are curious on how much they should start with investing, one thing I tell them is. You should put as much as you can. And what I mean by that is not as much as you feel. It's as much as you can after, you know, your true expenses, your living expenses are covered. You know, beyond that, the rest should be going to investing to get you out of the situation you're in. Now, for some people, yeah, that is $50 like you guys, how you guys started. But if you're at least starting and you increase that contribution more and more, the more that you're able to, the more your income grows, the more your expenses decrease, and then you'll see growth from that. But with people that want to think that you can start with simply $5 and that $5 is going to turn into a million dollars, it's not going to happen. And the, you know, the idea is on, Understanding, I guess, first, what is an investment before you're putting your money into it? Because if you think $5 can be turned into a million dollars, then you're confusing investing with gambling. Right. And uh, Alex, I'm going a, I'm to a adjust. Well, we're going to disagree on one part. You said, you know, people should put in, you know, they should invest after, you know, their expenses. Uh, what people then that's what people thought process oh i'll invest after you know i pay these bills and whatever i have left over i invest i disagree with that i disagree with that i say you treat investing more important than a bill so when you get your paycheck you're already saying hey i'm going to invest 50 dollars. i'm investing 50 dollars a month so the first dollars that come into your hands from your paycheck should be going towards investing then you need to bring down your lifestyle 
to do all everything else. Because if you say, okay, you do everything you have to do, because of course everybody gonna say, I need cable, I need Netflix, I need Disney Plus, I need to keep the AC at 65 degrees, you know, I got, you know, pizza, pizza doing all that. Then they're gonna be like, oh, I got five dollars left at the end of the month. Well, I guess I can only invest five dollars. No, it has to be intentional on purpose. To me, investing is more important than bills. I mean, ever since I started off at $50, when the paycheck came, $50 went towards investing. Then everything else happened. Now, if we just happen to manage to have some more pennies left over, $15, $20, $30, it went towards investing after that. But everything is set intentional on time. But that is the first thing that you need to handle because one thing for sure, two things for certain is if you spend your money and then you be like, I'm going to invest, at the end, 99% of the time, you're not going to have no money to invest. And because you're always going to find money is going to tell you what to do. So you don't want the money to tell you what to do. You got to tell the money what to do. So investing should be at the forefront of your objective when it comes to investing. That's just my thoughts on it. I don't think we disagree on that. I agree with you. The thing that I'm saying is someone inquiring about investing doesn't have 99% of the time doesn't have the discipline to even do that. If I were to tell somebody or if you were to tell somebody, hey, you should invest first and then worry about your bills later. I don't think anybody would even initiate the process to invest because they don't even have the discipline to even do anything like that. They barely have the discipline to save money. So I think once they do start to invest and they see the importance of investing, that discipline grows and grows. And then they can see I need to put this more of a priority. I mean, we treat it as a priority just as you do. But I think that for people that are mediocre people, they're going to be more afraid to try and invest first before, uh, you know, paying their bills. Well, I'm going to have to play devil's advocate again. I believe that's why we don't have as many people investing as we do now is because everybody thinks they should live their life and invest is secondary. That's what it is. That's the reason why people put the minimum in their 401k and then they go live their life and then, oh, I don't have no more money to invest. But they have money for Disney trips. They have money to do everything else. That's the reason why there's people that don't have retirement funds or live with the, or been with the organization for 20, 30, 40 years. And the only thing they got is about forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 of taking 401k loans. It's because people have prescribed to the thing is invest after I live my life. And that's why people don't. I mean, let's just, we can just go through the gambler, the people, the gambler, the people that we know. Everybody that, that we know, mutual friends or not, or people in your world or people in my world, they believe it's a secondary avenue. How many of them is invested? None. You see what I'm saying? I mean, the reason, the reason why, like, you got your, your parents to invest is because you took over the control of it saying hey you're going to put this much money in there and then they figured out how to live life after the fact i mean with you know everybody that you help to invest that are investing is because you took control of it and put that mindset in there but everybody else that you said hey you know you do it on your own you know you just save at the you know put whatever you can at the end none of them do it none of them do it yeah, I mean, but nobody would just... do it if you told them, if they don't do it when you say put what you can, they're not going to do it when you say forget your bills and then do it. I mean, because what I'm saying, when I say put what you can, that's my point. It's not put what you can after you go to Disney. It's after your bills are paid, your, your, your necessities, food, water, lights, house. Once that's paid, invest everything else. If they can't do that, they're not going to be able to invest first. They're just not going to because people I talk to, they already asked me, can I put 25 bucks in to start? That's not going to do anything now. If and it's just I mean, it's the same thing for I mean, I didn't start that way. You starting $50 a month. That's not starting that way either, because you should have been putting 600 a month. That would have been rent. But we didn't start that way. Eventually, no, no, that's, not, that's not what I'm saying. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is when I started off, the $50 was a bill. So soon the money came in, the $50 went there. I'm not saying, hey, put, throw caution to the wind. Just put all the money you have in there, forget the bills. I'm saying you treat it as it's the most important bill you have. If that bill is $50 a month, soon as you get paid, you put the $50 in there a month. 
And the thing is, is when people sit there and be like, okay, I'm gonna invest fifty dollars a month. I'm gonna invest fifty dollars a month, but I'm gonna, you know, do everything else that I do in life. And then at the end, when I got fifty dollars, I'm gonna put it in there. They never have the fifty dollars at the end to put it in there. So until you do it on purpose, intentional on time, and that's how I started. Fifty dollars was on purpose, intentional on time, and that's that's the money I put in there. And then everything after, if I had money left over, then I added it to it. But it had to be intentional time because most people won't do it because they won't have money at the end of the month. That's why these people live paycheck to paycheck. People get paid on Friday, they broke on Tuesday, and then they got to work, 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 work to get a paycheck. So if they broke on Tuesday, where's this fifty dollars coming in that they're gonna invest? That's really that's really how it is. And that's and that's not me just saying thinking that oh I'm smarter, I'm better than people. I'm thinking. Of all the people that I've talked to, and I've went both methods. I've went, okay, yeah, you, you know, take care of all your bills and whatever you have left. Nobody ever has anything left at the end of it to put it into the investment. So unless you put that money in there and make it make it intentional to them and let them know how important it is and say this is the first thing you do, then once the money is in there, it's so hard to is it takes so much time for to sell the mutual fund to get the money back. Next thing you know, it's the next payday by the time you get the money back. But they have to get that money into that vehicle to make it grow first before they start doing everything else. Because magically, I don't know how it happens, but magically, when it's time to come invest after everybody did everything else, oh man, I only got like $12 left. And you know, I might need a bag of chips at work for lunch. So I'm just going, I'm going to bypass that this week. And then they never, they never put the money in there. That's, that's just what that's I've seen throughout the history of me doing it. Yeah, I guess forcing yourself to do it, that that's a discipline trait yeah. people have to have, though. They have to have discipline in order to start either way. Because if you, you have to have the discipline to have money left over after your bills are paid, and you have to have discipline to actually put money up front first. So people just need to be disciplined. Right. Absolutely. Yeah, but I mean, it's it's very possible to, I mean, it's very possible to do, it's very possible to start off, you know, invest in a, a a low number, you know, fifty dollars. I think probably is the minimum. I would say, and then you just keep plowing. You keep plowing, and then every year you get a, a raise. You know, then you add more. You add more. I mean, I say if you get, let's say, if you you get the annual raise, and then your annual raise is a hundred dollars a month, half of it should go towards you know investment. So you keep fifty for the household. You put the other fifty into investments. If it's $200, you put $100. So now you have 150 in investments and then you now you got another 150. I mean, then you got another 100 going into the household. But that's exactly uh how I did it and that's I believe how I how people should do it. And that's just starting off small. Starting off small still grows with compound. The younger you start, the better you are. But I don't I don't believe that people understand and you said it best earlier when you said People look at investing as a lottery ticket. They figure they can only put fifty dollars in, two hundred dollars in. I mean, how many times have you heard, "Hey, man, what can I do? What can I do with two hundred and fifty dollars, man? What, what <laughs> stock can I? What stock can I put it into, and then it grow into like a million? Too many times. zero. <laughs> yeah, so that's what I'm saying. So that's what everybody look at it as as a gamble. But if you do it on time, on purpose, and then get into, you don't have to do nothing fancy. I'm not going to just sit here and say, say a group, a good growth stock mutual fund. If you invest in the market, that's VOO, that's SPY, that's a mutual index mutual fund that's indexed to the S&P 500 or NASDAQ. So now I just gave you four. I'm not going to say a group growth stock mutual fund. I mean, talk to your financial advisors about whichever one you want to do. But that's it. Just keep doing that on tension on time, no matter if the stock market's up, no matter if the stock market's down, and you just keep doing it. Keep doing it, adding, adding, adding. And when you get more income, you add more money to the investment you will be better off uh, when you get to that time of retirement. Guarantee. Guarantee. So let me say, guys, if you like the video, hit the like button. Leave us a comment down below. Share this video. Subscribe. And we'll see you guys on the next one.